all set, Mitch. All right, gentlemen. Fasten your seatbelts. Turn over, Derek. Okay, dear. I bet she does a good breakfast. Could never slam the door in her face. It's all here. Thirty quid. Six punters. Five quid ahead. Thirty pounds, right? my projector and my film. My fantasy. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have had an audience, would you? Well, I must say, I thought I'd make more than 15 quid a session. Oh, scary. Well, you've got to be more creative then. Fridge full of lagers, spied bob ahead, and you've got the illustrated souvenir brochure. Ten bob an inch. Because I could get some ice cream. Of course you could. Drag yourself up as a topless waitress, love. Cheerio. Cheeky. Oh, it's a tough old life Played in bits and pieces A really rough old life In bits and pieces A kind of temporary affair Nothing's there Just bits and pieces Every day you look for love Find it if you can Played in bits and pieces A really rough old life In bits and pieces A kind of temporary affair Nothing's there Just bits and pieces Oh, <laughs> oh, 
done. All right. Uh, did you get him at home? No, uh, I saw him come out of a cafe on my way round. So? Well, I had to do him then, didn't I? What, in the street? You couldn't wait until he got home? No, we've waited long enough. There was nobody much about. All right, a fella followed me. You won't give us any trouble, though. Why not? Did you do him as well? No, oh, I didn't have to. He was frightened out of his mind. He'd rather cut his own throat than go to the law. <clears throat> he told you that, eh? Look, I know him as a little con artist. I've seen him around before. Well, then you better see him again. If the law can get to you through him, it can get to me. Take care of him, eh? Properly. Look, he's not worth the aggravation. I say he is. I'll pay your wages, Dean. And I'll make the decisions. Robin Mitchell Enterprises? Oh, Mr. Hartley. No, 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 no. Everything's going ahead just as arranged. Yes. It's 2.30, my hotel suite. Okay. I'll see you there. Same suite that you had before. You can only have it for an hour because it's booked from today. And people are going to arrive sometime this afternoon. Okay, we'll be out by three thirty. Good. Because if you're caught in there, just bring us up a bottle in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Now remember to call in general all the time. Try to be a bit deferential. As far as he's concerned, he's doing you a favour. Who's doing any favours? The guy's trying to get rid of a load of rifles he's nicked, and I'm buying them off him. The general has access to certain property which he is prepared to part with for a sum to be arranged between you. I don't ask you what you're going to do with a load of rifles, do I? No. I'm just doing you a favour in exchange for a small fee, which is 10% on introduction, the rest on delivery. Okay? Yeah, so no. Yeah. I just want to make sure you're ready to meet the general. What kind of a clown is he, anyway? He's the... The kind of a clown who's got exactly what you want. So play it just the way I told you, okay? General! Mitch! You old son of a gun. It's good to see you looking so well, sir. <laughs> May I present Mr. Hartley, General Shastin. Ex-Color Sergeant Hartley, sir. How do you do? Ex-Color Sergeant. Delivery will, of course, be dependent on payment. Well, there's no trouble about that. Would you like me to write the figures down for you? <laughs> no, thanks, General. I prefer to keep them in my head. A wonderful gift. A good memory. Be without it. Excuse me, gentlemen. A of oh, I movies. wonder if I might have a private word with you, sir. Oh, certainly. For Christ's sake, get them out of here. They're downstairs, the people who bought the suite. Oh, she's arrived already, has she? Just stole them off every two minutes, okay? What am I going to say? You think of something, all right. A personal contact like this. There can be no difficulties of that kind here. Sorry about that, gentlemen. I think we'll be off, Mitch. I gather you're expecting a visitor. Oh, no, it's just a young lady I'm doing a small favor for. You surely have another drink. Ah, uh, no thanks, sir. Uh, I think we covered the main points. Uh, glad to have met you, Hartley. Ah, oh, well, I'm sorry you gentlemen are leaving so soon. I'll see you this time tomorrow, then, General. You'll be hearing from me, Mitch. Oh, General, before I forget, uh, would cash for a cheque suit you better? Well, uh, I brought cash. Uh, I'm not over fond of cheques. Thank you. There you are, Mitch. The rest on completion. Thank you, gentlemen. Good day. I do assure you, sir, your suite will be ready in just a moment. And I assure you that this won't happen in my country. You're quite right, sir. The service in this hotel is disgusting. Whoops! Do you mind? You've got quite a handful there, haven't you? I know you, don't I? It's a 
Of course, you work in Harry Meyer's barbershop. You do the men's fingers, don't you? You better let me take that. Your cappuccinos are wobbling. Excuse me? If you continue to ignore me, I shall take all my clothes off. And not only that, I shall strip naked to the buff. <laughs> you see, you love. I'm full of my naked buff. Always raises a titter. I wouldn't raise one of mine. My name's Mitch. Rosemary. Rosemary. That's very beautiful. I should be in touch with you, Rosemary. All right. All right. Fine. Darling. You uh, wouldn't walk out on me, would you, Chris? What, and leave you the flat? You must be kidding. Horse with the... Uh... I'm going up north. No? No. In the morning. But I thought it would be nice to be packed and ready to go. Well, where are you going? Mm, Manchester, Leeds. Go to a fashion show. Nice. I'd rather stay here with you. And how are you getting there? Boss, this guy, darling. Oh, Mr. Ronnie. Well, he's been planning this for a long time, I'll bet. What? Getting you in an out-of-town show with an overnight stop. Don't be so stupid. One is not like that. I know. But he's booked to Jason Grooms, too. You know he hasn't. Why do you always get in such a frenzy whenever I mention him? What's he driving now, though? An Aston Martin. Yeah, he would be. You don't have to resent him just because he's got money, darling. Mm -mm. Daddy's money. I know. So what? Well, if you'd taken the trouble to ask me what I'd been doing today, I could have told you that I'd made some money. Well, that's good. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand? Hmm? You got it? It's good as. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, it means I've got two hundred on deposit and the rest is on its way. Well, thank you for that tumultuous burst of indifference. I'm sorry, Mitch. But it's been on the way before, hasn't it? Is it signed, yeah? Well, it's not that sort of deal, love. The second demand for the telephone bill. So I'll pay it. You said you'd paid it. So I forgot. You always forget things like that. Well, they're such boring, trivial things. Everything to do with this flat, Borgia. You'd rather sit in the dark than mend a fuse. Right. Where are you going? Mitch! Mitch? Uh. What are you doing with that? Well, I'm fed up with these doubts about my ability as a homemaker, so I'm going to make supper. And you shut up. Speak when you're spoken to. Put the chicken down, Mitch. Yes, sir. I, I swear I will never do violence to an ex-living creature in our kitchen again. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I am a rotten homemaker. Of course, I really am. You are a fool. No, no, I'm only a fool. Mitch! Stop it! <laughs> You are a nut. Mm. I know, a nut, I love you. No, 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 listen. What? It's just that you have this knack of making everything seem so temporary. Temporary? You know, I could take that as a slur on my abilities. to a living creature, did I? <laughs> Gary! Just coming round to see you. 
Literally, you look positively shattered. May I suggest one of my hangover cures? No, thank you. I got better waiting for the general defense, so I gave him your number. Good thinking. My fridge is groaning under a full complement of cold lag, as I think we might ease its burden. Well, we could make a few inroads. Good. Then it's post-haste to my rooms in Baker Street. At least you can offer a first-rate description to the lads in blue. It's just what I can't do. They'd want me to be a witness. Which, of course, you were. Gary, this wasn't just a punch-up. It was a professional job. Exactly. If two traps fall out and blows are exchanged, well, that's no concern of ours. But this was a cold-blooded attack. I have to speak up. Not me. As long as I keep my mouth shut, I'm safe. <laughs> but I can't see that. The chap who did it can recognize you. He doesn't know who I am or where I live. And if I stay away from the law, he's got nothing to worry about. Well, you could avail yourself of a spot of police protection. <coughs> protection? Look at all the blokes that get sprung from prison. If the police can't look after them, what the hell can they do for me? Now, the best thing I can do is forget about it. Have you mentioned it to Chris? No, no, I don't want to get her involved. Could be the general. Robin Mitchell Enterprises. One moment, please. The general, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Oh, thank you, General. Yes. Yes, I look forward to hearing from you. That's it. That is it. Two thousand quid, as good as in the bank. Get hold of Chris and suggest a small celebration. Oh, hold your horses, Mitch. Don't make any rash promises. I've had some bottles of champagne rotting away, despairing of ever being opened. Spot of bubbly, eh? Mm. I think this is a very occasion to pop a few corks. Now, all we need is a nice, obliging lady to complete our amusement. A nice, obliging lady? Well, I may have the very number. Mm. I can... Hello. You're home early. Yeah. Did you enjoy the pictures? Hmm? Gary found to say you were going to the films together. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we decided against it. We decided we'd have a few drinks instead. Well, that's Gary for you. He wouldn't give up two hours good drinking time to watch a film, would he? Where'd you go? He must be nearly 40 now. He's got nothing in his life except hanging about and pubs and corrupting minors. Oh, come on. Well, Gary's one of the few people I know left with any principles. Principles? Mm. Enjoying life and putting something in it so others enjoy it too. Mm -hmm. The only reason that Gary can enjoy his principles is because he's got a private income, darling. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. We'll go out tomorrow and you can choose me a whole new set of friends, okay? You know how I feel about Gary. He wasted your time. Yeah, well, you still haven't told me where you went. Yes. I want to guess, darling. I want you to tell me. I went out to dinner. Who with? Alex. Alex who? Alex, the boy who runs the art gallery around the corner. I didn't know you knew him. I don't know him. Oh. I met him. He was going out for a lonely dinner, so was I. We went together. Oh, very nice. Oh, it was nice. It's better than spending a lonely evening here. I, I know, I know, I know. I said we go out together, but you know me, a couple of glasses of champagne. I'm anybody. Champagne? Yeah. Yes, we're celebrating a nice phone call from the general. What did he have to say? Well, he said that the money is as good as in the bank. But you know, Chris, we, we could even think of getting married. Just think about it now. Go for a shower. Don't be long. No.
turn. Thank God I saw him. I could have walked straight into him. Could have been decidedly awkward. Hmm. I think I should leave the area for a while. I won't hear such defeatist talk. There are pressures on me from all sides. Ah, the good lady. <laughs> She's been living on promises for a long time. Well, there's a lot to be said for making an honest woman of her. I never thought I'd hear you say that. A wedding ring makes a girl feel safe. The marital residence takes on a completely new atmosphere. She's quite happy to potter around there. <laughs> While you're off with your charms, <laughs> indulging in a bit of what you fancy. <laughs> you know, of course, I'll never believe that you suggested we should get married. Well, I shouldn't say it was my idea. It might arouse her suspicions. Now, they don't need arousing. They're going flat out the whole time. <laughs> We'd uh, better prefer to defend ourselves. What are you talking about? That's Rosemary's husband. How do you know? I saw him lurking at the end of the street when I took her home. You take the other one. I've got a better idea. Don't be surprised if the husbands take action. <laughs> I'll get it. Robin Mitchell Enterprises? Speaking. Oh, Mr. McNair! No, 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 no. I'm glad you've got in contact with me. Yes. Well, when can we meet? Yeah, I'll tell you. The, uh, the King's Head, you know? Off Wigmore Street. Yes. Tomorrow, 12.15. Fine, I look forward to seeing you. Goodbye. A West Indian black I found. He owns the rest of a bit of coastline out there. Could be worth a fortune if it's true. Oh, I see. He's over here looking for some finance to develop it. And he's had the misfortune to meet you. Hmm, all I've got to do is convince him I'm in property. You did such a great deal. I'll get financial backing from anywhere. And your percentage could be worth? Oh, 30, 40 grand. Enough to set me up, anyway. I'm glad you've had a bit of good news, because here's a bit of bad. George William Fletcher, a scrap metal dealer, age 43, savagely beaten in a West End street, died yesterday in the Middlesex Hospital. No witnesses have been found, but the police think Fletcher was the victim of an underworld library. Well, that's that, then. Yeah. And you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and God help you. Get involved in a gang war. I think calling it a gang war is going a bit far, don't you? It did say underworld rivalry. Well, yes, but that's just the beastly press at work. They're hardly going to stick to the dreary old truth, now, are they? Look what Roseby's husband did to you. An ordinary bloke, right? Now, think what a professional would do. Anyway, I, uh... Don't want to get involved with the police, thank you. Why not? None of your enterprises are illegal. No, I just wouldn't want them looked into too closely, that's all. Well, yes, but can you see a chap killed and say nothing about it? Villain, though he doubtless was. Yes, I can. Is this the one you meant? No, Dave. The one in the big front room. What's the matter with you? Nobody told you to kill anybody. It was an accident. I don't know what you're getting upset about. You don't. you don't think the law might try a little harder now that it's murder? No, the law doesn't know it was me. Yeah, your witness does. How many times do I have to tell you this? Look, if you get your photo in the paper again, your friend can send it to the police with a little note 
saying this is the guy that did Fletcher. Look, I'm not wasting my time. I'm down after this little Burke. Look, he won't do anything. You know, if you weren't the only one that knows what he looks like, I'd put somebody else on the job. Tell you to get lost. Now, when I say no witnesses, I mean no sudden witnesses. All right. And don't just frighten him. Take care of him. And don't hang about. All right! I'll do him! You look a bit like me. Well, you are different to what I expected, <laughs> yeah, but well, you came in on the dot of 1215, so I thought you must be him. Oh, it's dead lucky, really. <laughs> I was having a bum in a moment, Mitchell. He uses this pub a lot. Uh, are you a colleague of his, Mr. Uh, after a fashion. Yes. Uh, and they pop it to business, uh, Not anymore. Yeah. You'll never know if uh, Mitchell's address about you, would you? I'm not sure that I do. I... Oh, but I do have a phone number. Anyone here got a yellow 1100 parked around the corner? Yeah, me. What about it? You better get outside, mate, and shift it. Coppers are towing it away. Sure. Uh, uh, I'll be a minute. If Mitchell does come in, don't tell him you've seen me. I'll give him a surprise. All right. Mr. McNair, Mr. Mitchell's waiting in my cab outside. He'd appreciate it if you'd join him without delay. Would he? Thank you. I'm sorry about this, Mr. McNair. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, come in. I've been trying to avoid that chap for ages. Thank you. I was just about to give him your telephone number. That would have been unwise. It would indeed. We were old friends at school, and because I finance a lot of projects, he thinks I should finance him too. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, I see. He's persistent, is he? Oh, yes. He would have tried to borrow money off you if I hadn't laid on that dramatic escape. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> this is my part of the island, Mr. Mitchell. It's very nice. I'll be frank with you, Mr. McNair. I've met a lot of people from your part of the world before who tried to set up deals like this. And there have always been two major hang-ups. One, actually buying the land involved. And two, convincing the government to take the land out of sugarcane. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll answer your question point by point, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, please do. One, I'm an islander. I know the people and they trust me. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I did something that no one else was prepared to do. I went around the coast to every small farmer individually and convinced him that it would be good to sell the land. That must have taken quite a time. Over a year. <laughs> but then, you see, I, I knew the kind of money it could bring in. So, you see, my first priority is to raise the finance so that the farmers can get a good price for the land. And that's where you can help, I believe. No problem. Point two. If we raise the finance, then I'll have a talk with my brother in our Ministry of Agriculture. So, I've got to find the money and you've got to convince the government. That's about it. Shall we look at the details? You're not having another one. Got to have something. <sighs> Tonight is going to be a bit of a strain. Why? Oh, Jeff likes you. you. You just have to be yourself. No, I don't think that'll do. Listen. If I'm going to convince Jeff that I'm a company man at heart, I'll have to put on a bit of an act. Well, don't overdo it. I've seen some of your acts. What have I ever let you down? Oh, in a minute, No, no. I'll get it.
Usual driver. Good. Well, you've got to be careful. It might have been a bird from across the street. There aren't any birds across the street. Well, it's time there were. Come along. Mustn't keep Jeffrey waiting, must we? Straight through a man at 50 yards, this will? Yeah, I believe you. How's your pulling power? I prefer something like this. <laughs> Make a lot more noise. Yeah? Have we done any shooting? Nope. I used to go out every weekend in Manitoba. You get quite a taste for hunting over there. Yep. Uh, no. Yeah? No? No, Mitch. Oh, a shooting man never points a gun on anyone. Jeff, I am not a shooting man. <laughs> I can see I'm going to have to take you in hand. Mitch, I'm going to be completely frank with you. Oh, please do. I think you're a risky proposition. But I like Chris, so I might just take a chance on you. Well, doing what? Well, I'm finding that most of my time is taken up on the aircraft higher end of the business. That means I need someone to look after the car side. You might just have enough experience of selling to handle it. Well? Oh, well, I'd have to think about it. I don't like a man who needs a week to make his mind up. <laughs> so Pete Atkins goes into the church. He says to the priest, Father, there's a drunk elk in your graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's an incredible story, Jeff. Don't encourage him, Chris. Another brandy, Mitch. Mm. Still on the last one. Oh, come on, drink up. You're not driving. Mm. I'll have one. I bet she can drink you under the table, huh? <laughs> well, every time. Pete Atkins. <laughs> what a character. You know, one day Pete uh, was invited up to dinner with his boss. He was a pretty stiff sort of guy. And, well, Pete's a pretty heavy drinker. By the end of dinner... He was sitting there with his bladder bursting. <laughs> oh, this is a terrible story, Jeffrey. So anyway, uh, the boss's wife shows Pete where the lavatory is, but he's so drunk, he can't find the light switch. <laughs> he thinks, what the hell? I'll do it in the dark. You know, only on his way out, groping for the door handle, he accidentally switches on the light. What do you think? The seat was down all the time. He practically flooded the place. <laughs> Funny story. Yeah. No, I've been hell talking his way out of that one. <laughs> if you go on like this, Jeffrey, Robin won't ever want to come and work for you. I'm not sure that he does anyway. He seems to want a week to make his mind up. I don't blame him. It's a big decision. And I suppose that living in London, the thought of having to travel down here every day, it's a bit off-putting. That's quite a point. <laughs> Jeffrey, there is the flat over the showroom. Yes, that's, uh, that's empty at the moment. It's very nicely done up. We lived there for a while before we bought this place. Mm. Oh, well, you know how Mitch is, Gwenny. He feels homesick when he's two miles over the West End. I surprise you all. Jeff, you throw the flat in with the rest of the offer, and I'll say yes right now. It's a deal. If Chris agrees. Of course, I, I agree. I've been trying to get you all day, Mr. Hartley. Yes, but, well, I've got to go out of town on business for a few days. So, that check, could you send it to the other address I gave you? Yes, I don't know. Mm hmm. That's it, yes, Gary Carter. Thank you. I'll be seeing you. Bye. Why can't you send the check to our new address? Oh, it's got something to do with tax. Look, look, don't be a drag about it, love. I've got enough on my mind with moving and everything. <laughs> You've been very inattentive to me lately. I know, but it'll be different when we move, I promise. Mm. 
Oh, it'd be marvellous living in a flat where everything works. <laughs> Don't answer it. I won't. Listen. Sounds like somebody's trying to break in.
And don't blame me, Chris. Then it's all right, then, isn't it? I really wish I could explain it to you, but there's too much involved. Not anymore, there's not. For me. But, um, it won't always be like this. Chris? That's it. The little boy look, and it won't always be like this, Chris. Well, we've heard that one a few times, haven't we? I mean it. I wish I could explain to you. I'm not interested whether you explain or not, okay? I've heard you explain things a hundred times or more, and I've always believed you. I've always said to myself, well, Christ, if I can't believe him, who else is there? But I saw what you were all about tonight. Don't get melodramatic, Chris. It really doesn't suit you. I had to hide from a madman. I couldn't call the police, and you're telling me not to get melodramatic? Listen, you con me. You con me just like you con everybody else in your life. What the hell does that mean? It means that I thought you wanted to change. I thought you meant it when you said you wanted to work for Jeff. I do, I do mean it. You don't, you don't mean it. You want a place to hide till it's safe to come back. You want to keep your flat and blackies and your job out of town till it's safe to come back and start your crummy weaning and dealing all over again. That's no way to live, Mitch. It's my way. Keep it. That's your cab. Given Hartley your address, so he'll be sending around the check to you, okay? Look, I, uh, I think you'd better write all this down for me, just in case I forget. I'm not at my best this morning. I had dinner with an Indian lady last night. You remember? I remember the chicken vindaloo, all right, huh? My God. A joy to the taste buds. But it completely put me out of action. Now listen. When that check arrives... Hang on to it, okay? Put it in your account, and I'll let you know when I need it. Aye, aye, Skipper. I see you're developing a ship-shaped mind at last. I need to. Okay? Of course you do. Right. Oh, when all this nonsense is over, I suggest we take a little trip abroad. One of the less puritanical countries. But a man with an eye to fulfilling himself can be assured of his fair share. Yes. Well, when you get rid of the flat, do it on the phone, would you, Gary? I don't want you going round there in case somebody sees you, okay? Mitch, I'm not at all sure this is the right way to handle this situation. That's the only way I know. Come in. One pound, twelve and six. Thank you. I don't usually go shopping for my tenants. No, it's very kind of you, but it's my leg, you see. I really shouldn't go out at all. How will you get to work? I work from home. Keep the change. Thanks. Thanks, love. Be down in a minute. Hello? Mitch? It's Gary. Look, don't worry about your flat. It's all arranged. But these boorish estate agents want your signature. You can forge that, can't you? Well, I'd rather not. 
I don't want to add forgery to our list of misdemeanors. All right, well, I'll meet you somewhere, but away from the neighborhood in case our friend is still around. What about the old water bus? About halfway. Okay, half an hour. Yeah, fine. Excuse me. your place exactly? Over there, uh, west of Paddington. Mm. Halfway to Wormwood Scrubs, actually. Mm. Most appropriate, I know that. What I find hard to visualize is how you while away the hours in your seedy lodgings. Listen to the radio. Write letters. Wait. mistake coming on here, Gary. I feel trapped. Yes, this is a bit claustrophobic. Still, we'll be back on dry land in a couple of days. I just want to get back to my room. I can ride off for the next few days until the money arrives. Well, I walk back with you, past the way. Far enough, okay? Well, a bit of company might be a good idea. No. You sure? Yes. Look, you'll be able to pick up a cab back that way. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
General's check was waiting when I got home yesterday. I was phoning you all afternoon, but you weren't there. No, I had to go out. But I've cashed for you now. Right. Wrap it up in a parcel for me, anything that doesn't look like money, and send it over in a cab for me. Now listen, I'm in a hotel near Victoria. The name is Mr. Todd. Hotel St. George, Vauxhall Bridge Road, okay? Mitch, are you all right, old son? I'm fine. Take a couple of tenders out for yourself. Wouldn't dream of it. Where, um, where will you be going? I'll let you know when I've made up my mind. Look, Mitch, now you've got the money, there's nothing to stop you going to the police and telling them what you know. And then tactfully disappearing to foreign parts. Not a chance. Exposed, old chum. Yes, well, I had to see you. I have a last request to make. A last request? There's a nasty breath of finality about those words. That's why I'm going away. I found a good place to hide. I should think you'd need one after all those shabby hotels. Yes, well, I've got an important telephone call coming from Jamaica tonight at 7.30. McNair. Ah, and you want me to take it in the guise of a worthy colleague? That's right. Just tell him Mr. Mitchell's had to go away for a while, but everything is going ahead just as planned. There's a letter in the post. Okay? Okay. It shall be done. Gary, it's very important. This could really set me up, all right? Not another word, old chum. Just leave it with me. If I... You uh, haven't forgotten our little venture abroad now, have you? Huh? Our trip to North Africa to study local customs. Yes, well, we'll have to see about that. Are you going to have a drink? Hmm.
Everybody knows you're still a bits and pieces man And it's a hard old life Bits and pieces A scarred old life In bits and pieces Nothing you can share when nothing's there Just bits and pieces You're the one who looked at life Then turned around and ran Oh yeah, you really ran Everyone can see your freelance Everybody knows you're temporary Bits and pieces, man And it's a rough old life Well, you can be very pleased with yourself, Mr. McNair. Our minister's a very forward-looking man. He must be. I've made an appointment with him for next week, Thursday, 10 a.m. And the architect? He'll get the most out of the site for us while keeping the government happy with their hotel. Fine. How about designing a brochure? That's what's been organized. Fine. Well, it only remains for us to drop our final contract. Good. Your letter of credit will be lodged with the bank Thursday morning. Three percent slice right off the top could be quite a lot of money, Mr. Mitchell. It'll do for a start. Double glazed windows throughout. She's not in. to speak? Mm. Well. Let's meet tomorrow and talk it over. Well, all right. All right. Fine, well, two o'clock, the old place. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Jump in, Mitch. What? Come on, come on, jump in. We've been waiting for you. This bit's the silencer. I could just shoot you here. But we don't really bother, do we? Come on, jump in.
is this our boy, Harry? Yep. Uh, he's the only one who picked him up. Shan't need you for a while, Harry. Stick around there. Two return tickets to Jamaica, eh? We won't be needing those anymore. Uh, sit down, Mitch. So you're the one that killed Dean, eh? I... I didn't know, don't know any Dean. As I see it, you decoyed Dean out into the stinks, where you'd already concealed a shotgun that he'd walk into, right? I don't know what you're talking about. You had a vehicle concealed to effect an escape. You'd even found a bent dealer to sell it to. He works for one of our subsidiary companies, so he won't say anything. Unless I tell him to. <laughs> Should have sold it to somebody else, shouldn't I? wouldn't have done any good. I watch points. I like to keep track on people. And now I've caught up with you. Tell you what I'm going to do with you, Mitch. No, hang on. Now, wait a minute, please. Listen. What kind of threat could I be to somebody like you? I mean, we're not in the same league. I might even be of use to you. That's right. What? You are going to be useful to us. I'm giving you the job. The job? Hmm. Dean was a pain in the ass to me and my fellow directors. He'd have had to go sooner or later. You did us a favour, Mitch. Yes, but I, I had to. I mean, th th there was no other way that yeah, I... I know all about that. You did an excellent job, and I want you to work for us. Now, every so often, you'll receive instructions from me telling you to do an operation like the one you did on Dean. When it's finished, you'll receive an agreed sum of money. Now, what could be easier? I can't. Of course you can. You won't do it because you like it or because you want to get your name in the paper. So you'll be very careful. I couldn't do it. What else can you do? Can't go to the police. Those days are over for you. You're one of us now. Cheers. To our future association. It's a hard old life, bits and pieces, a scarred old life, bits and pieces, nothing you can share when nothing's there, just bits and pieces, you're the one who looked at life, then turned around and ran, oh yeah you really Everyone can see your freelance Everybody knows your 
Tough old life. 